The term Kaizo gets thrown around a lot online when it comes to describing super hard games or levels purposefully created to mess with the player or to really challenge them in often unfair ways. The term itself originally came from a ROM hack of Super Mario World, where somebody modified the original game to feature extremely punishing levels that would actively go against traditional level design to create something that even highly skilled players of the game would find challenging. Since then, it's become a term that's been widely adopted to describe a multitude of Mario Maker levels and just about any game that fell under the same punishing design philosophy. So with that in mind, let's talk about today's Level Build Showcase, a remake of sorts of the 1996 original Tomb Raider game that started it all. Sabatu's Tomb Raider takes everything that you know and remember about the original game and almost completely changes everything about it to create a completely fresh experience. I'm not joking when I say that everything about the original game has either been completely changed or altered in some way, to a point where you might as well take everything that you knew about the original game and just throw it in the skip. You ain't gonna need it anymore, trust me. Level layouts, enemy placements, enemy quantities, traps, puzzles, and item placements have all been completely redone, which means that you really won't have any idea on where to go or what to do when it comes to your first playthrough. Often these levels have been greatly expanded upon, with areas that once only took up a regular amount of space now having been transformed into these vast and multi-layered and intricate areas instead. It does a brilliant job of breathing new life into levels that, let's face it, we are more than familiar with at this stage, and some of these reinterpreted areas can look downright amazing at times. It's really impressive to see what sabatu has been able to do with the Tomb Raider 1 main engine. But, and this is something I feel that I really must stress, this is one of the hardest Tomb Raider level sets that you will ever play. Wish she didn't do that little stumble. I really wish she didn't do that little stumble. Okay. <sighs> Jesus Christ on a bike. And it's still going? There is a reason why I front loaded this video with all of that talk about the term Kaizo and what it means, because this build is essentially a Tomb Raider Kaizo for a multitude of different reasons. Vast and often unfair quantities of enemies that can easily overwhelm you and take off large chunks of your health, scant amount of resources to find in each level to replenish your health and ammunition with, making finding secrets practically mandatory if you want to have any chance of surviving this, and platforming that often requires pixel perfect precision and timing to navigate through as well as knowledge of advanced movement techniques in order to accomplish at times. Oh my fucking god, are you actually kidding me? All of this combines together to form a really punishing experience for casual scrubs like myself, but for those who do nothing but eat, sleep, raid, repeat, then this level set will be a welcome change of pace. For the rest of us normies, however, be prepared to strap in for this one, because it's going to be one hell of a bumpy ride for you. Whoa! There are several times when I livestream this that I wanted nothing to do with this level set anymore, with one of the more notable examples being this section in the Obelisk of Car Moon level, where I was left at the mercy of having to deal with two Atlantean mummies and two winged Atlanteans at once. I had barely any health to keep me going up until this point and no med packs to use to heal myself. Yes, that's kind of my own fault, but that's by the by. And in the end, I ended up spending about an hour and a half, yes, you heard me correctly, an hour and a half baiting these guys into a place where I could easily cheese my way through them one at a time. However, on the flip side, there were many other moments where it would just all click, and I found myself able to naturally navigate through the environments and really enjoy it, and appreciate what Sabatu had created. I really enjoyed the new additions to levels that I didn't quite enjoy too much in the original game, like the cistern, now having a full-blown cavern to explore that makes navigating through the level feel much less tedious to me. Or the complete subversion of the Sphinx room with the floor covering the lower chamber being totally removed so you no longer have to open the door to get to it, but instead you have to explore both floors in tandem in order to find a way to the final chamber of the level. All of this combined with everything else that I've previously mentioned, as well as areas that rework designs found in Anniversary to make it fit naturally within the PS1 original's aesthetic, the awesome texture work and the fantastic use of sound design and tracks from the Tomb Raider suite, come together to form a truly unique, if brutal, reinterpretation of an all-time classic. Of course, we can't talk about this level set without mentioning the sheer metric ton of boulders that have been included in this game. Ah! 
To say that I was caught off guard more by these things than anything else I encountered in Sabatu's Tomb Raider 1 would be selling it completely short. If there is anything I want you guys to take away from this video, it is that these boulders in this game are effectively Liam Neeson from the movie Taken. They have a particular set of skills. Skills they have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make them a complete nightmare for people like me and you. And trust me when I say that they will find you. <laughs> Wait. Wait, what? And they will fucking kill you. No matter what you are doing, where you are, or even if you are prepared for them, they will just straight up roll up to you and murder you with intense ferocity. Ah! Sabatu Technologies, bouldering through the competition since 2022. <laughs> This level set also has its fair share of new puzzles to contend with as well. For instance, this room here in Egypt has a puzzle that requires you to walk over several tile triggers on the floor to cause the corresponding boulder on the ceiling to drop down and roll towards you, with the idea being to survive and dislodge all of the boulders to unlock the door to the next area. Another notable puzzle has you reenacting the timed gate puzzle in the Colosseum, but with a much stricter time limit and multiple levers to have to pull in the interim, which take up more of your precious time. And one that I was able to cheese and completely break by total accident. No, you French connection. Wait, what? Wait. What? The majority of the remaining puzzles are actually not too bad, but the ones that are quite punishingly difficult, I would be lying if I said that they didn't feel satisfying to finally beat. However, there are a few moments where I feel that some of the solutions to a problem felt kind of obtuse. Almost like you were expected to somehow know that this item or action would result in that puzzle's solution. The one example that I will bring up as being particularly bad at this was found in the first room of St. Francis Folly, where you're just expected to know that stepping on these random floor tiles would result in a random part of the wall opening up to reveal the switch to the next area. Yeah, okay. Now, I'm kind of ashamed to admit that I had to resort to using a guide to get me through this particular moment, which wasn't the only time that I had to do this, believe me. Shoutouts to Stephen3517. I hope that isn't your PIN number, by the way. But I think if it had a sound cue or some kind of audio feedback to signify that the player had done something after walking over these tiles, that it would have gone a long way to solving this type of issue for future players, and would help them work out the solution more naturally. And whilst this sort of moon logic approach plays right into the Kaizo definition mentioned earlier, I feel that it is something that should really only be used in a secret area, much like the original did with the magic floating Uzis in Egypt that required a leap of faith in order to reach it. To be honest, there's so much I want to talk to you guys here about this level set and tell you about some of the really surprising and awesome things that it does, but I honestly wouldn't want to either spoil them or end up dissuading you from trying Sabatu's Tomb Raider 1 for yourself. What they have managed to do here with this reimagining of a classic game that we've all played countless times is breathe fresh air into a familiar experience so it feels like you're playing it for the first time. It's almost like this version of the game is your rose-tinted, hyperbolized childhood memory of Tomb Raider 1 that has been brought to life and fully realized. Sure, there are a few moments of occasional unfairness, some jank here and there. Look at that! What? What the f- What did I even hit? And some platforming segments that I feel expect a bit too much perfection and foresight from the player. Oh, you are f fucking kidding me, right? You are actually having a fucking giraffe. Hang on. I've got to show you this. Right. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Just perform miracles. Just call me Jesus, because I'm going to turn this water into fucking wine. But for all of its shortcomings, Sabatu's Tomb Raider 1 is something that I can definitely recommend. There's clearly been a lot of love and care poured into making this, and it shows from just the amount of things that have been expanded upon, and in some of the ways that this game has been improved upon from the original too. Again, just be prepared to be tested with this one, as this will be a challenge to beat. It's also going to be a long level set too, so if you ever decide to give this a go, then be prepared to dedicate a large chunk of your own personal time to it as well. Just like I did. And yes, that's my final scorecard. And yes, I did die that many times. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> And that just about wraps it up for this episode of Vision. As always, you can find the link to the level set in the video's description below, as well as find the link to my Twitch channel where I play these live every Tuesdays and Thursdays over on twitch.tv slash steveofwar. 
If you have a level set to recommend to me, I'd love to see them down in the comment section below. And you can also send me a recommendation over on the War Manor Discord server too, which the links to are of course in the video description. Special thank you as always to all of my Twitch subscribers, my new channel members, as well as any Kofi donators as well. You guys and gals are all people that I really, really appreciate and you all help keep this channel going. So thank you so much. Until next time, raid on guys, stay awesome, and I'll see you on the next vid. Wait. Wait, what's that? Oh god. No, Sabatu, please. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make. I didn't <laughs>